today we're going to make that potato salad you carry to special occasions. Okay, now for the ingredients. This is an important part. This is not your run-in-the-mill potato salad. You need to get the, uh, the recipe right if you're going to be consistent. I've been making this personally, cooking it, for over 30 years. I've been eating it my entire life. My grandmother used to make it, and when she passed away and I got the recipe and started making it, I discovered quick. It, it makes a difference because potato salad will come out different each time. It was when I started getting the ingredients consistent, the potato salad started to become consistent. Now, when there's a family get together, I get a call or a text. Hey, you're going to make your potato salad. All right. So with that note, you need to get the medium size red potatoes. Not the little small crawfish or uh, crab ball potatoes. Those don't work at all. The big, large red potatoes, it'll, it'll turn out dry. You want these medium size. The, the little bigger than the ball potatoes, but a little smaller than the uh, uh, big ones. Now this recipe calls for two and a half pounds. It'll make 12 servings. It won't feed 12 people. Somebody like me will make three, <laughs> will eat three servings easy. So you just have to figure out, you know, what you're doing. Is it, If it's for just you and a couple of people, this is the recipe. If you're going to a family get together, double it. Uh, make five pounds of the potatoes and just simply double everything else. It works out perfect. Uh, just double it and you can, you know, go as big as you want. Alright, next you'll need a third cup of apple cider vinegar. It has to be the apple cider or you'll be in for a surprise. Next, you'll need a cup of vegetable oil. Not soybean or these other canola or whatever else they come up with. It just needs to be a regular vegetable oil. Not cooking oil, but it's vegetable oil. Uh, you'll need two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of black pepper. You'll need four hard-boiled eggs. You'll need a third cup of finely chopped onions. They need to be chopped fairly small. You don't want a strong onion taste. Uh, you can use whatever onion you like, the white, the yellow, the purple. I use whatever I have. I, for a long time, would only use uh, the uh, white onion, and, and it works out really good. But over the years, I've realized it doesn't matter, uh, just as long as they're chopped up. And, of course, you'll need uh, two tablespoons of dried parsley flakes. And you'll need a half a cup of real mayonnaise. Okay, not the salad dressing mayonnaise or the other. It needs to say real mayonnaise. All right. Now with that, we're going to start cooking. All right. We have the potatoes and the eggs and the water. And we're going to boil these together. This is not part of the ingredients, but we're going to add a little salt to the water like so. Add as much as you want. Um, they're going to boil together. Now these these eggs need to be hard boiled, so it's you don't have to worry about what time uh, they boil. You just let them boil, and when the uh, potatoes ready, the eggs will be ready at the same time. Uh, some of their shells may crack. It just doesn't matter. So we 
going to let these boil and we're going to start cutting up our ingredients. Now for the purpose of the video I've already cut up the onions that we need but I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say finely cut them. You want to take your onion, or in this case is what's left of it, and cut off a fairly thin slice. I don't want it too thick. Then we're going to cut it into little bit of pieces, like this. until we get pretty much what we're looking for and we'll end up with a third cup of that. Alright, we put our uh, apple cider vinegar and our uh, vegetable oil in this bowl right here. We mix the two ingredients up and we're going to add our sugar straight into this bowl of the oil mixture. We're going to put our salt in there, just dumping it in there on top. Uh, we've got our pepper. Okay, in this bowl I've put the uh, vinegar and the vegetable oil in it together. I've added the sugar and the salt and the pepper and I'm simply going to beat it together with a fork. This here is kind of important because what we're starting to do is to make the uh, the uh, oil mixture that the potatoes are going to be marinated in. So we really want to mix this up good. And I mix it for a few minutes. Okay, I've been mixing this for a few minutes. And you want to mix it until pretty much the only thing you see in there is the pepper. Uh, you want the uh, sugar to, and the salt to really mix in good. Now I'm going to set this aside and I'll be, I'll be mixing it a little later too. It's going to mix it several times. Now with the oil mixture set aside, we're going to take another bowl. And in this bowl, we're going to put our onions. and our parsley flakes. And we're just going to just dump those in the same bowl. We don't have to worry about mixing them and we'll set them aside as well. Alright, the potatoes have been boiling a while. We're fixing to test them to see if they're done. I'm simply going to try to stick a knife in it and see if it goes in easy. I'm going to get one of the potatoes. I'm going to slide a knife in it. Oh yeah, it slides right in there. If the potato is raw or not fully cooked, the knife will fill the drag. But when you fill it real smooth, it's ready. Alright, we're going to peel the eggs now. I like to just tap them a little bit, gently roll them, and then the shell just basically falls off of it. Real nice and easy. Set the egg aside. Next one. Barely roll it. And that shell just falls off. Just crack it on the side. Just barely roll it. I should do a video on boiling eggs. <laughs> Alright. I used to tap it at each end because I heard that's how you break the membrane and that's just didn't work for me. But anyway, this works. Alright, so we have the four eggs. Alright, we've got us a clean bowl here and we're going to take care of the eggs. And what you want to do is take the egg and chop it into little chunks. I do it like this. Not too small, but not too big. Just nice little chunks. Just cut 
at each section and then I just kind of chop them this way. Can't really mess this part up unless you just grind the um, eggs to the point <laughs> that they're too small. It's pretty much all it is to it, is getting them into small chunks. And that's what this whole potato salad is. is it's a chunk potato salad. You're not going to smash or stir. You're simply going to mix uh, with a folding. You'll see what I'm talking about. But yeah, everything is going to be chopped up like this. Okay. Now we have our, our egg. It's chopped up. All right, with the eggs done, we're going to work on the potatoes next. You want to lay them out, let them cool a little bit, but you don't want them cold. You want them warm. And so, after these cool for a little while, we're going to come back and we're going to take the skin off, cube them up, and put them in with the egg. All right, we're going to start taking the skin off. They've cooled a little bit. I'm going to take a fork and just kind of scrape the skin off. They come off really easy. You don't need a knife, just a fork. See how that does? It comes right off. Now we've got a bowl that I'm going to put the skin in. I'm not going into the potato with the fork. I'm just scraping the skin off. That's what we have. And I'll show you again. I turn the potato on the side and I literally just go around the side. That's all I'm doing. And then I can just take it off one half at a time. Very easy to do. The trick is let the potato cool a little bit but not too much. You don't want it cold. And that side's done. I'm going to flip it over and just pull the rest off. Anything you don't want on the potato, just peel it off. And a fork works perfect. If there's an eye or bad spot you don't like, just take it out with the fork. You can see we've gotten some done. This comes really fast. But you won't get it any faster with anything other than a fork. side again. And by doing that, you actually end up with just two halves. And you're going to take, pull one half off and the other half off. It's, it's really fast. This was the one part I didn't like about making the potato salad. I love eating it. But as I got more familiar with it, I got quicker. This is a potato salad my grandmother used to make. And it's wonderful warm and hot. And after you are done, you put it in the ice box. Make sure you cover it with something so it don't dry out. But it's just as good, if not better, the next day. I used to fix myself a bowl as a 9 or 10 year old and eat it like it was a dessert. I'll get some more of these done off camera. Then we're just going to cut them into little cubes. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Because this is what actually makes the potato salad. You don't want the chunks too thick. Just 
take your time because you don't want them too small either. I want to get some in my hand so I can get them closer to the camera. And that's what you're looking at. Basically diced cute potatoes. And we will sit there and cube them up. And one of the things I've done when the potato salad is too wet is I'll simply make another one and add it together. In other words, I'll take two and a half more pounds of potatoes and just make another one. And uh, this potato salad, in all of my years of cooking it, it doesn't matter how much you cook, I have yet to see any get thrown away. But, I have changed up a few little things and it's been a long time since I've had a potato salad be too wet or too dry. The dryness was set was solved basically by realizing that the cubes have to be small. The wetness I solved pretty much uh, by the soak time, the marinating time. Um, I didn't I didn't know how long that the potato salad was supposed to sit with the oil mixture but as a kid it seemed like a long time so I used to do it an hour and that proved to be inconsistent sometimes it would come out great sometimes not I increased the uh, marinating time to two hours and then I increased it to three and decided that two hours was pretty much perfect uh, since I've started letting it marinate two hours, I have yet to have a potato salad mess up. So, uh, but just let just so you know, if, if you mess it up, there's no need to throw the potato salad away. You simply make another one and add it to it, and uh, it works out fine. Of course, when you make the second potato salad, you would put just a little less oil in your ingredients, but. Uh, let the potato salad, if you've got the time, let it soak two hours and you're good. I have to let it soak three, it's fine. Uh, but two hours seems to be best, three hours seems to be overkill. It works out fine, but it's not necessary. Pretty much this is it. We're just cutting them into small, even sized cubes. Just eyeball them, there's no set thing here, and I'll finish the rest of these up. Still cutting the potatoes. The uh, I love to cook, and the reason I'm putting this video up is uh, I have grandkids and kids, and they'll have kids, and uh, I want to make sure that there was a place they wanted. Maybe there's one of them that'll learn to cook. And uh, go see great grandpa or grandpa's recipes. Uh, I've spent a lot of work cooking and recipes. And I just hate for it to die when I die. Give you an example. I took a recipe for chicken and dumplings and made it once a week for several months till I got that recipe perfect. And uh, we're gonna go over gumbos and crawfish etouffee and you name it, we're gonna cook it. So if you're interested, you can subscribe to this channel and uh, if you wanna watch more videos, you can. If this is turns out to be a good potato salad just like the video so more people can see it that's the way YouTube works and uh, if not that's fine too the real purpose of this is to teach my descendants how to cook 
grandma's potato salad. All right, with the potatoes all cubed, the work is done. It's just a matter of mixing it and letting it sit. Now, I personally like a lot of uh, boiled eggs chopped up in potato salad, but not this one, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I make different potato salads because sometimes I don't have time to make this and you know I'm frying up a piece of a couple of pieces of fish real quick and I don't want to spend you know the time to make this um, but with this potato salad you, you add different ingredients you'll come out with a different outcome the, the eggs will make it too dry to give you a, an example true story my grandmother entered this recipe in a contest for a major steakhouse chain uh, and I was like I said 10 11 years old and she won now the prize was a free meal we got to go there and eat uh, for free at, at the local one um, and I was disappointed because when I tasted the potato salad it didn't taste like grandma's potato salad and the reason is they had to alter the way they made it to fit a commercial environment. They couldn't sit and let a potato salad sit for, you know, an hour or two hours and uh, take the kind of time to make it. And the result is they didn't come up, come out with a really awesome potato salad. They came out with a mediocre, they could have made, you know, but well, they did make in a lot less time and you could tell. So. With that in mind, we've got the potatoes and we've got the eggs in this bowl here, my big mixing bowl. And I like to use two forks and I'm just going to toss, lightly toss. We don't stir. Uh, you don't want to smash those potatoes up. We're just going to toss, lightly toss those, those boiled eggs in with this chopped up potato. So just kind of toss them around. Now, we've got our onions and our parsley flakes in this bowl, and we're just going to mix them all up in there, just throwing them on top, and with our two forks, we're just going to kind of toss it around. We're not stirring. I can't emphasize that enough. You don't stir this potato salad. You just want to toss, going from the very bottom up to the top. I'm scraping the bottom of the bowl so that I get everything. Now when I see it's kind of all mixed, you can really tell when you see that parsley all over the potatoes. Now I'm going to kind of level it out. And we're going to take our oil mixture. And I've got a big old spoon here. I'm just going to mix it real good and I'm going to spoon this all around the edges and then I'm going to come towards the center and there's plenty. You'll, you'll be able to cover the entire top of this. Now we're not stirring this anymore. We're going to just let this oil mixture just drip all over the potatoes because if you stir it or toss it or anything at this point all the uh, all the oil ends up at the bottom of the bowl and you end up with a mess so we're just going to just drizzle this all over it I just go around the outside edge and then I I go around the next you know a little closer in towards the center and then I start over again. I'm going to keep mixing it up real good. And you just want to kind of go over. I have, through experimentation, and after I put the oil in, I have tossed it lightly thinking that I was going to get the oil mixture all over the potatoes. And it doesn't work that way. And I do remember my grandmother telling me, if I ever made this, don't touch the potatoes once you put the oil on. And through the years, she was right. No matter how many times I make it, it's her potato salad. And incidentally, 
she got this recipe from her grandmother. So there's no telling how old this particular recipe is. It's older than I am. Next, we're going to cover the bowl with aluminum foil. And that is important because if you don't, the potato salad will dry out. The potatoes on top will just dry. So we want to put this on there real good. And we're just going to let it sit for two hours. I will be back then. All right, it's been two hours, and we're going to put our final ingredient, and that's a half a cup of real mayonnaise. Take a big spoon, just a big ladle, whatever, and we're going to be just folding it, just picking it up and folding it, going to the bottom all the way and just kind of mixing it this way. Go all the way to the bottom, make sure we get any of the oil mixture. Just stir it real. Well, we're not stirring, we're just folding. Just pick it up and kind of toss it like this. We want to mix that mayonnaise in real good. And actually, I said the mayonnaise is the last ingredient, and that's wrong because we still have paprika. And it's not on the ingredient card because it's a final thing, more for looks. All right, we just keep folding that real good. And it appears to be really mixed well. Then we're going to take the bowl, the serving bowl, or the bowl you're going to keep it in. In this case, it's this here. And we're going to Put it in like so. If you're in a hurry, you can get away with letting it sit for an hour and a half, but I wouldn't go less than that. And this came out real well. And the final ingredient is paprika. And we're just going to sprinkle this all on the top of it. Give it that pretty look. Here's the finished product. Doesn't that look good?